Okay, a cautionary tale about ChatGPT for advanced developers. Now, this is funny uh, because typically when I when I think about these things is that I think ChatGPT is really, really bad for new users, but... I think okay, it, there's some advantages being a being a, an advanced developer, being someone that has a lot of seniority to being able to use something like ChatGPT. So I'm actually very curious why this is the case. When ChatGPT first came out, I decided to essentially only use it sort of like a coworker that I would occasionally get help from. And I decided yeah. not to more deeply integrate AI assistants like GitHub Copilot into my workflow. But you I've actually really enjoyed GitHub uh, Copilot. I have. I have I, I've actually genuinely enjoyed it. I think it's it's pretty dang pretty dang good. Um, you hate Copilot. Well, the thing is, you got to make sure if you use Copilot, if you use Copilot as something to write your code, you're wrong. And I've said this a lot of time. Uh, Copilot as a means to write your code is terrible. Copilot as a means to write your boi boilerplate really really good. And you gotta you gotta do that. Do, do I use Copilot on Netflix? Absolutely. I just use it all the time. A year or so later, I've still been sticking to this. I still haven't used GitHub Copilot, and whilst I'm still not heavily using ChatGPT, it has become a common part of my workflow and has unlocked skills and opportunities for me GPT. that might not have been possible without it. Just recently, something happened that I think highlights what are both the most powerful and most dangerous aspects of ChatGPT okay. for more advanced code. So this little story starts with this <laughs> issue that was opened on an open source utility I've been maintaining. The existence of this utility is what highlights the powerful aspects of ChatGPT. I had a lot of the knowledge necessary to build this thing. By the way, this is what I call, um, this is what I, this is why I say TypeScript is kind of bad. Okay. And the reason why I say this is that look at, if you make a change fundamentally at all to your program, how much effort and time is it going to take for you to rework all of these? If at any point you think that too many unit tests cause it is it makes it so that people are scared to delete code and all these kind of things like this is even harder but it's so good when it's working that's the problem it's type masturbation it's not you're not providing a materially like it is nice but is it worth the effort and that's the thing that i often see is sometimes you know a record string whatever is just nicer i understand that you can do that but man I'm always just so hesitant about these things because they always end up being such a pain in the ass to maintain. Just such a pain in the ass to maintain. But the typing required for it is quite complex and I couldn't rely on my real person coworker in this scenario to just do all of that. <laughs> my boy! I recognize this image from, uh, from the old Twitters. The hard bits for me. Although ChatGPT couldn't just instantly solve all of the typing problems I threw yeah. at it, its suggestions combined with the knowledge I did have about TypeScript allowed me to get things working. It also pushed me to learn more about the areas where I lacked the appropriate knowledge and apply them directly and immediately to a real scenario. Without this sort of I still, I still think this is just still completely wrong. Accelerated learning ChatGPT can provide, I might not have had the time to complete this task. This is okay. the part that I think is extremely powerful about ChatGPT. It can be great at getting you unstuck. You might know yes. most of what you need to build something or achieve some task, but maybe there is some part you are lacking that just completely blocks you from getting it done. ChatGPT can help break through those barriers quickly and point you in the direction you need to go, especially in these more advanced scenarios where there might not be obvious or pre-existing solutions. Figuring out what you need to even be learning in the first place can be difficult and time consuming. What I found with building this utility was that for the early parts of the project, I much more heavily relied on ChatGPT for ideas or implementations. But as the project progressed, I was rapidly learning the key bits of knowledge I was missing and felt capable solving most typing issues with no assistance. I By the way, this is like the ideal, right? Can we all agree that this would be the ideal AI learning ability, which is that you have these knowledge gaps, it helps you get across them, and by getting across them, you now have this new knowledge gained and you are now faster. Like this is the ideal way of of, of learning, really. Is like even just I was having just yesterday, I actually used ChatGPT as a method for searching because I want to find a way to crawl a project based on imports in Node and produce out the minimal set of JavaScript files that are used in a project. And I realized that it, that's very hard to Google. It is, you use way too many words that just, that are commonly used for everything. But I can explain it via ChatGPT. And ChatGPT actually pointed me to some libraries that were 
semi-useful. And so that was pretty cool. It was like a good experience. I was very happy about that. I still need a lot more work, and I realized that it's, it's completely, it's not there, but it is nice. I ended up with a solid product and a bunch of new knowledge I could use for future projects and for maintaining this project. This, I think, is a healthy and powerful way to use AI coding assistance. Where yes. I think it is not as healthy is where you are relying on it to substitute for large gaps in knowledge. There is a scenario I run into constantly with ChatGPT that feels like a giant trap for people who might be over-relying on ChatGPT and don't have an appropriate level of knowledge and context for the task. So this is where this issue comes into the story. When first reading about this bug, I did already have a sense of what was happening. It's okay. a type inference issue I had run into before. But it had been a while since I had worked on Signal Slice, so I was lacking some context. And like everyone else, I'm always lacking time, so I handballed it to ChatGPT to see what it would say. It gave me a seemingly reasonable answer. It wanted me to create these utilities. <laughs> the term reasonable is, is hilarious in this situation, in the sense that a lot of us look at this and already feel like something unreasonable has happened here. But... <laughs> what are all these but seemingly reasonable but I, I do like where this is going which is there is definitely a danger here that you're gonna just you're gonna get into this infinite tree of exploration on all the wrong paths because you can't guide that's where my assumption of this is going i, I let types him we'll instead let him of go. using the t action sources and t action effects types directly the crux of the problem was that the generic types for t action sources and t action effects were being inferred too early my knowledge of advanced TypeScript still isn't strong enough to know at a glance if this was going to work, but it looked promising. It didn't work though. This sort of thing happens all the time with ChatGPT. It gives yeah. a promising looking answer, but it just doesn't work. So I pressed ChatGPT some more explaining that it doesn't work, and as is commonly the case, it suggested sweeping changes. It wanted me yep. to switch to a class-based approach and use a builder pattern that would completely change how the public API for the utility works. I feel at this point it would be easy to assume that ChatGPT is right and that what you're trying to do just isn't possible with the current setup. So you either give up or make the drastic changes ChatGPT suggests. But I wasn't just swinging wildly with ChatGPT here. I did have an understanding of the problem, general knowledge of how the utility works overall, and what I'm trying to achieve with it. I do. I am actually just curious overall if there's like something to be said about this moment where ChatGPT suggests a a different type, in which if a builder, let's just pretend this builder pattern actually allows for this to happen and allows you to make it easier. Perhaps there is something to this to always just kind of take in, which is maybe there's just even though it changes the API and all that, maybe the API is part of the problem. You know, it's one of the dangers I always have with TypeScript, which is that you can build the most immaculate type inferences, which often can lead to really simplistic APIs, which actually hide underneath the hood an incredible amount of complexity. And so I'm, I'm curious about this. Like, is it both wrong and right? It's obviously wrong in the sense that suggesting a complete rewrite is stupid. Like that's not, that's not, that's almost never the answer, but maybe it's accidentally suggesting something different, which is maybe there's just a simpler way to approach the problem to begin with. I have a whole heap of context that chat GPT doesn't. And so with a little more effort, I was able to come up with my own solution. It involved creating more targeted types so that properties were typed only with the specific features they actually need to function rather than supplying them everything in. By the way, I can't, I, I, I don't even know what this stuff says. Like I, I, I vaguely recognize things, right? I know that that may, this thing extends this just means that this thing is like some sort of type, some sort of structural value of this thing with a, you know, but I'm still not very good at it. The signal size. This is what would cause some types to be inferred too early. This required only a small change to fix. For those saying what the F is this, it's a type, it's a type definition. So effect state has three generics on it. They all need to fall within this parameters. And the type and effect state is a selector state and an extra selectors and an action methods. So it's 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 a union of all these things together with these generics needing to be set. But I still like I don't like these things are still very just like a lot to me. It's the issue. Out of curiosity, I decided to grill chat GPT a bit. I asked what it thought of the solution I had come up with. With the typical chat GPT flattery, it said the solution was elegant and gave reasons why. I asked nice. why it didn't suggest something like this initially, and it defends itself quite well actually. It said essentially that my approach is tailored to this specific situation, whereas chat GPT was generally going to go for a more general solution. 
again mm. with some flattery thrown in for good measure. This is essentially why I think, at least for now, it is still so important to not too heavily rely on coding assistance. Having Again, I think this is actually just one of the best arguments for why Copilot is better. Copilot doesn't, you don't ask Copilot questions effectively. Like, yeah, sometimes I'll say Copilot, read uh, read the standard in line by line, and it will do that. And that's nice. But it's, it's, it's me in control, whereas like I'm asking an open-ended question that could go in several different several different directions whereas with typically with copilot you're you're kind of taking it in this one specific direction copilot chat i'm i I, i'm not really into the chat based versions i think that they're just largely going to be a miss for a long time and maybe someday in the future maybe a year from today maybe when chat gpt5 is announced maybe when chat gpt6 is announced i'm just not really fully convinced that these chat style programs are really that huge of a win other than there are some things that it's it's pretty good at, right? Like if you wanted to bounce some ideas about how to do module resolution in Node, like let's just go back to that example I gave. You want to be able to take a singular file and resolve to which actual literal JS files this resolves to. How would you do that? Now, this is something that you could bounce ideas off of ChatGPT, but I wouldn't necessarily want to use ChatGPT as a method to implement it. Even though it's a fairly black box problem, you could start kind of trying to, you know, bring it down and all those kind of things. But I think you're going to just run into a lot of oddities because it's not, it's so much better if you have the knowledge and you drive it in these small little slices as opposed to you letting it drive and you're just giving it the small slices, if that makes sense. In context of the problem and the system in general allows you to search for solutions where a coding assistant might miss them and to know when a coding assistant might just be leading you astray. This is partly my worry about more integrated AI assistants like GitHub Copilot. Having it handle boilerplate syntax and APIs for you probably provides a massive speed boost to development with no important loss. But I think it also makes it easy to start letting Copilot steer the ship too much, and then you are losing that important knowledge and context of the system you are building. Until we get to the point where AI can do all of the coding for us completely, we do still need knowledge and context of the code stored in human brains to get the job done properly. Until then, AI assistance wielded with a good strategy can still be a powerful ally. Anyway, I'd love to hear about how you approach integrating AI into your own workflow, if at all. And if you like this video, please feel free to leave a like subscribe. or subscribe before you go. I like that. That was a great video. I'll give you a like and a subscribe. That was a great video. I so I do got something kind of unusual maybe to say about AI. So I you know on this channel we've learned a lot of languages. We've spent a lot of time learning things, and one thing that I've taken from all of this is that learning a new language with Copilot, I have found that I am less confident using the language itself, even though I can write it quickly. If that makes any, if that makes sense. And what I mean by that is that when I have nothing that helps me learn other than my memory, it's like it stores really fast. And when I have something that kind of helps me more and more, I learn less and less and I rely more and more. And yeah, like eventually it'll all catch on and I'll be able to do it. But there's definitely something about it where if I'm the one purely driving it, like even when, if I like turn off the LSP, I like really learn the language quick. And if I you know, take off one thing at a time. I learned, I, you know, it, it becomes better and better. Yes, that was a Windows alert sound. Shut up, okay? I still stream from Windows, okay? Shut up! Anyways, Windows mentioned. Let's go. This was great. Uh, there's definitely a lot of dangers. Uh, I would definitely heavily consider, by the way, why I love NeoVim. Oh, man. Wait, why, wait. Why NeoVim nerds are so obsessed with the terminal? Whoa! Okay, calm down. Like, yes, I do like the terminal, okay? Bro, bro slow down. Slow your cooking. Here. Uh, anyways, I do absolutely. I think there's a lot of dangers. My honestly, my biggest worry is not me getting kind of bamboozled by ChatGPT or people in the professional world submitting not as good of code, even though that is something you worry about. You hope that code reviews and stuff like that catch it. My big worry is that students can go through a four year program and come out knowing nothing. Honestly, that's like that's more of what I'm worried about is that some of the most important times in my life were struggling through an AVL, right? Struggling through how to do recursion, struggling through these things. And so that's like, that's honestly my, uh, my bigger worry is that you don't take the time to actually learn. You don't take the time to actually struggle and just be okay with struggling. Be okay with struggling. Just be okay. It's not a big deal. 
It's not a big deal, okay? It was the case before ChatGPT, but it was rarer because you had to get through all this and you had to get decently through it. Again.